Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome back to Palettes a Week. Today, in the last day of Palettes a Week, I'm going to be talking about the final book in the series and that is The Duke's Children. I can't read you the first sentence out from The Duke's Children because it contains about five spoilers for previous books. It's just, it just contains a lot of spoilers and I feel like I don't, I don't want you to know that that is what happens at the beginning of this book because I feel like it, one, it will spoil the previous book but also it will spoil some of the rest of the series knowing that this is how this book begins, if that makes sense. So The Juice Children is one of my favourite books in the series. I really, really enjoyed this one. Um, it's probably like joint second with Can You Forgive Her After The Prime Minister, which is my favourite. And this is a really strong novel. We follow two young people, Lady Mary and Lord Silverbridge, um, and their kind of romantic relationships and also their relationship with the rest of their family, especially their father. Lady Mary wants to marry a particular young man, but this young man, unlike Mary, is not aristocratic um, and therefore her father disapproves of this and Mary is kind of striving to find a way that she can be with this man throughout the book. And then Lord Silverbridge, um, on the other hand, is having a lot of problems with money and the fact that he is spending a lot of money constantly on things that he shouldn't be spending money on, mainly like betting away huge, huge, huge quantities of money on horses. And when I say huge quantities, I mean like at one point in this book, Lord Silverbridge, like, bets £70,000, which would be a lot of money to bet nowadays, like a huge amount of money to bet nowadays. In the Victorian period, think of how much money that is. That was an obscene amount of money that Lord Silverbridge is like, oh yes, I'll bet that on a horse. He gets into lots of trouble with that. Meanwhile, his um, romantic relationships are also a bit difficult. There are kind of two women that he is torn between, one of whom would be the kind of proper respectable choice for him as an aristocratic gentleman in the Victorian period because she is an aristocratic young lady. But then there is also a particular American young woman who um, is rather intriguing to him as well. And we follow these two siblings and their various relationships, as well as following like the politics of the day, as we always do in the Palliser series. I love this book a lot. I think it's really, really compelling and really engaging. I think the character relationships in here are done so well. The way this book looks at family, um, the way it looks at love and marriage, the way it looks at grief, the way it looks at class and how like the British class structure at this time operates is really really interesting. There are so many things in here that I really really enjoyed. Um, it's just a really a great fun but also beautiful and moving read. Like there were parts in this where I was like moved to tears because I do think Anthony Trollope is such a fantastic writer and the characters in here as always are brilliant and as always and Anthony Trollope there are a few characters where it took me quite a long time to work out whether or not I liked them or not um, which is something I really enjoy when Anthony Trollope does where there's a character and you're like should I trust this person should I not trust this person and it's like well over halfway through the book before you're like yes I should or yes I shouldn't um so yeah that was really fun as well I also think the way this book looks at kind of parenthood um, and generational difference um, and how kind of society is changing in the second half of the Victorian period and how that leads to kind of big gaps between parents and their children I think is really really well done as well and really really fascinating. There's one point where Lord Silverbridge uses the slang term awfully to mean very and awfully is quite like a new slang term in the 1870s and his father is just like I don't see that there's any occasion for awe and it just really made me laugh and um, there's quite a lot of like fun generational difference. There's quite a lot about how the way people view the world has changed between generations in here which is really nice as well and I think a really interesting book for looking at how things have changed a lot over the course of the Victorian period and the sort of how the late Victorian period is different to sort of the mid-Victorian period. I don't think there's anything I can say about this book that I don't like. Um, the one thing I will say is that one of the plot setups in it is quite similar to the plot setup of the Prime Minister and the plots go in very very different directions and done very very differently but when I started reading The Duke's Children I was like I feel like I I read this plot very very recently um, and it does become very different later on but just when you begin this especially if you read it in quite quick succession after the prime minister which I did it will feel a little bit deja vu um, but Trollope does do that from time to time I've noticed that plots are often um, repeated in different ways in different books of his for example in the Barset Chronicles there is a very similar plot line in Frowny Parsonage as there is to in Dr Thorne which again proceed and um, go one after the other in that series so it's just something Trollope does he did write 47 books so you know he had 
had to use similar plots sometimes. I think this book is a really fantastic end to the series and I found it really rewarding. I think there were one or two more characters who I might like to have seen from earlier um, bits in the series. For example, the main character from the first book, Alice, I was kind of hoping might make an appearance in this and she's mentioned near the beginning and I was like, oh, Alice is going to appear and then she didn't and that made me a bit sad. I don't think, um, in comparison to the last chronicle of Barsetshire, which is the final book in the Barsetshire Chronicles, um, which closes that series by Anthony Trollope, I think the last chronicle brings together a lot more different characters and a lot more different like previous plots of previous books and kind of brings everything together um, I don't think the Duke's Children does that quite as much though I think there is a little bit of that um, another thing I will say about this book and um, there are quite a few characters in here from um, the way we live now which is a standalone novel by Anthony Trollope um, but although it is a standalone quite a few characters from that turn up in here um, Lord Silverbridge goes to the same club which quite a lot of characters in the way we live now go to which means a couple of the minorish characters from The Way We Live Now end up in here, which means The Duke's Children does contain a couple of spoilers for The Way We Live Now. And also there's one character in this, Dolly Longstaff, who I'm not sure you would understand him in this book if you haven't read The Way We Live Now. Like, I don't think... I don't know if he'd make as much sense to you in this book if you hadn't read The Way We Live Now. One other thing I did want to mention talking about The Duke's Children Fairly recently, um, there was a new edition of The Duke's Children released by, I think, Everyman Library, which is a little bit longer than the original published volume version, um, with, like, bits in it that Anthony Trollope had cut. I did not read that version, partly because it's not that easy to get hold of, um, and this version was in my library, um, and partly as well because I have slightly mixed feelings about it, because we don't really know, as far as I'm aware, why those sections were cut when the book was published. There are like some people who think it's because the publishers deemed it too long and made Anthony Trollope cut it down, but then like this version that I have, there's lots of notes in the back about the bits that were cut um, and why Trollope chose to cut them. And there's quite a few passages he cut which presented one of the characters in a slightly different light, um, and I think they were cut on purpose. Like they read to me like Trollope cut them because he like decided he wanted the character to go in a slightly different direction, and so he specifically cut those bits. So I. I can't work out like which would have been Trollope's dream version of the book or whether the Trollope's dream version would have been somewhere in between. Um, so I might like to read that version one day. It's not like got big chapters taken out or anything. I think it's just like a few words at a time basically um, or a few sentences or paragraphs at a time that were cut before the book was published. And also like I'm an editor by trade. I do believe in editing so I also kind of I have no objection to publishers editing an author's book because I think they should and um, so I also like don't object to the fact that bits were cut um, but then maybe at some point I would like to read the um, slightly longer manuscript version. I just wanted to explain that because I know a few people had asked me about that um, with regards to The Duke's Children. And I think that's all I have to say about this book. Like I said, I think it's really fantastic, a really great close to the series and one of my favourite books in it. There are more things I want to say about how much I love it, which I can't say without spoilers for previous books in the series, but I love this a lot and I think it's fantastic. And I think that is all. Thank you so much for watching Palettes a Week. I hope you're all now very interested to read the Palettes a series if you haven't already. It's a fantastic series of books that I really, really love and would highly recommend. So yes, please let me know down in the comments if you have read the Palettes a series, if you got up to The Duke's Children. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.